Let's take a look at how unsafe a merry-go-round can be. So let's say we have a merry-go-round. So it's just, you know, we can think of it as a big disc um, that's rotating around its center with some angular velocity, uh, omega, or omega-1 for um, the initial angular speed. <clears throat> and then, you know, let's say there's four kids on it. And three of them um, move in to a much closer distance. Um, so initially, let's say um, they were all on the outside, so they were a distance R1 from the center. And then let's say afterwards, um, they're a distance R2. Okay? So let's see um, what the change in the angular speed of the merry-go-round would be. Okay, so um, initially, the angular momentum we have is going to be, for each person, it would be their mass um, times the distance they are, so r1 squared times the angular velocity. Uh, and we have, initially we had four of them around the outside. Um, and then afterwards, after three of the children have moved into the middle, we would have 3m r2 squared um, omega 2 plus m r1 squared omega 2. In other words, these are the three children um, located in the middle, and then this is the one child who's still located on the outside. Um, and so now we can find out what the what the angular momentum is for the uh, you know after the three children moved in. So we see that um, omega two three m r two squared plus m r one squared is equal to four m r one squared omega one. Uh, of course, the masses can we can. We could have done this before, so we cancel the masses out. Um, and so we see that omega 2 is equal to 4 r1 squared omega 1 over 3 r2 squared plus r1 squared. All right. Um, and so now let's just to see, um, you know, what this, what this would mean with some numbers in there. So let's say initially um, r1 is two meters and then let's say that r2 is one meter so so all the children moved in you know half the distance of the merry-go-round okay um, so then in this case we would say that omega 2 is equal to uh, 4 times 4 so 16 omega 1 over 3 plus 4 um, so yeah so let's see so our I'm sorry yeah 3 yeah 3 plus 4 so this would be 16 over 7 omega 1 um, so we see that omega 2 is greater than twice omega 1 so it's sped up by more than twice as fast um, <clears throat> But it could have been even faster, right? Let's say again we took the same the same um, merry-go-round, ground, and let's say basically all all three children were able to move right to the center, okay? Um, you know, and their and their moments of inertia is basically kind of negligible. So in other words, if we let r two go to zero, um, then we would say that omega two would just be f um, sixteen omega one um, over four which is four omega one. So we could actually get this thing going four times as fast as it was uh, originally. Uh, so that's a pretty good clip. So, you know, just imagine, um, you know, having four little kids, having three of them go in the middle, like you would literally have this last, this last kid, you know, hanging on for dear life and they would probably just fly off. Uh, so again, make, this is, this kind of shows you how unsafe merry-go-rounds can be. Um, but luckily when we were kids, we didn't really know enough about physics to know that this would happen. Um, so we never actually tried such a crazy thing, or at least my friends and I didn't. <laughs>